Ooh, this one is really heavy. Hmm. Interesting one. It's a time for package from China. <laughs> hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video, we are going to be doing a chit chat about the 1080p full HD projector from Pia Prit or something like. I hope I'm going to be pronouncing this correctly. However, this is not your typical projector because inside we're going to be finding a game box. This is a hybrid device and configuration that we have seen before. It has been some time ago that I reviewed something similar like this. However, I was really curious if this was any good because the previous one we have checked out was absolutely a lot of shenanigans with very strange, let's say, game sticks built in and very bad controller and overall bad experience. However, this thing comes with a controller that I've seen before and they're not like superb quality, in particular by looking at the shoulder buttons, but it's very comfortable, have this floating D-pad the wireless configuration I've seen before and here we're having the dongle and we do need two AA batteries. But in here we're finding the projector itself and let's see what we're getting with this and is there like something built in or is it something they did with the software. Then we're having all the needed cables. This thing is 110 volts when I understand of and the 230 volts when I'm having over here. In the packaging we're having a power cable with not the right connection, I'm going to be using a converter. It seems to be a tiny dongle, so I'm guessing this contains the software. And then over here we're having the manual for the beamer and a basic remote. And the remote itself is just your cheap remote that we have seen a gazillion times with different kind of products. Use a manual explaining some overall as to how you need to use this. We're going to be using a beamer screen or projector screen how you need to power on buttons, everything, how does it actually work out. And also when it comes to the size, how you want to get yourself like all the way up to 160 inches and what you're going to be needing for the meters of distance. So a quick explanation about how it all works. It also implements the game mode. So here it says like insert the USB stick into the projected USB port and the Bluetooth receiver in the USB port. And this way we can automatically boot up into the software itself. So that's quite interesting. But besides that, there is not a lot of information about, let's say, the Beamer itself or specifications far I have seen. So in here, we're having all kinds of overall, let's say, in, uh, let's just set up stuff. But we're just going to be plugging in and seeing if this thing is any good. So far, no information about the Beamer and that find a little bit of a downside, but I'm not expecting a lot from it. So the overall configuration is something we did see before with, let's say, other, let's say, let's say beamers that we've checked out here on the channel. But this projector, so in here we're finding not a lot of information too. There's not a lot of stuff in the manual. However, the design looks kind of nice. Micro switch on and off switch. And at the back we're finding an HDMI in, USB ports, and headphone jack out that's very convenient for external, let's say, audio and the ER for having the input or at least like the communication way for the remote itself. But at the bottom part, we're finding three rubber feet. The configuration has been done very nicely, so it will stand perfectly on your desk. In my case, I'm going to be using an adapter and to see if we can put my, let's say, tripod underneath. So let's see if it's going to be the general, let's say, screw mechanism. Yep, it is indeed. Yeah, the plastic is not very thick, so it is a little bit of bouncy over here, but you can basically use a tripod, so we're going to have the best overall configuration. Before we're going to be doing this, so let's plug in the USB, and this I'm guessing the USB for the games itself, and the one for the dongle of the controller. Let's plug in the cable, just the two pins, we have another one over here laying around, and let's go here, and I will show you what I'm going to be doing and how I'm going to be recording. So this is the CY900, a smart projector 4K, that's actually native 1080p, Android to 9.0, having 400 ANSI. In other words, it's not like a super high definition beamer, but they are actually like promoting this with a lot of built-in games. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So let's connect everything. The controller has been connected, everything is ready, and oh man, powering this thing on, it pushes out a lot of air, so cooling, it's quite loud, let's put it that way. And we're going to be using my roll-up screen. And the overall quality itself is surprisingly good. But let's get into the menu and let's do a quick overview. 
It does have a lot of built-in features like YouTube, Google Play, so we can do some cool things with it. Let's check the App Store files, and there is even some weird emotion store or something. But how is the overall quality? So as making this video, we do have some lighting in the room itself. So let's shut it all off. And I must say the overall quality is absolutely not bad itself. So for a low, let's say budget beamer. But let's do a quick tour of the device itself. Over here having the apps, how oh, it's going to be with the Aptoid all famous, let's say alternative store. We do have the option for Netflix, but with Netflix you need to take consideration when you're going to be booting this up. Where Netflix will work, you do sometimes have the issues with these devices that we can use full HD if it's a rooted device. So, but I just want to check out the Pia Brits game situation. So we're going to be booting it up, the app itself. Ha! <laughs> and it just launches into Retro Arc. Okay, so what do we have over here? We do have a lot of different emulators running on this. So we have Capcom systems. Okay, some arcade stuff. Let's see how far we can actually push this thing. Having some Game Boy, the D-pad on the controller is quite nice. And PC Engine, let's see why we're having more, some Neo Geo, Nintendo DS is over here. And PC Engine, Sega CD, and is this some Dreamcast or some kind? No, this is not Dreamcast, it does have like this weird, very strange logo. But when it comes to the overall collection, it's kind of basic. But let's play a little bit of an overall gameplay and let's see what we can expect from this. Okay, so we can actually press the button, A and run. So let's crank up the volume. The overall quality is quite good when it comes to the screen. I love it, but... Oh man, what did they do? Oh man, oh man, oh man. So the emulation, it started off great. Okay, so ah, when I'm pressing the button, it automatically shuts down everything. Oh, that is annoying. Oh man, what a mess. Okay, so when it comes to playing some arcade games, this is going to be a hit or miss situation. The speaker itself about when it comes to the Beamer, it's not bad at all. However, let's get into some old stuff and let's see if we can actually boot up something from here and see how the other emulators will run. Different kind of games also need different emulators, and this is absolutely one of those cases. This is absolutely awesome to see these games running. 4x3 FPS ratio, no problem whatsoever. The D-pad is very pleasant to play with this controller. Don't notice any input lag. All the sound effects are here, so we do have the right emulator now. So far, so good. Pressing select start will give you the retro arch menu and over here we can go back through the main menu if you want to make a quick load, quick save. So not everything runs that horrible, let's put it that way. But if you have problems, so one of the things they didn't check is setting the core association. And association meaning that we have different cores that we can enable. And if you are lucky, they enabled more than only the MAME 2003 plus. You can also switch to Final Burn Neo if you want to, but you can also download new, let's say, actually like different emulators from the online service. And this way you configure the game separately if you have any problems. But if you're going to be looking into the list itself, oh man, there is so much stuff on here. So let's boot it up. I'll have the same configuration, of course. There is no fancy menu, just RetroArch itself. Let's run it. But when it comes to it, let's say play some old school games on this Beamer. So this, they were selling this actually like a plug and play situation. And it's partially true. It is indeed like a built in software emulator, but it is just actually RetroArch. You can just install it or any, let's say Fire Stick, or if you have like a very deluxe Beamer with Android, you can even maybe install it there in combination with separate emulators. What so far you can see, everything seems to be running just fine if it has set to the right core or emulator. 
So let's move to another favorite game I love to play on my Sega CD. Is the final fight, of course. A very nice board of the series from the arcade. So far, it runs perfectly. Still very surprised of the overall audio quality. So, and of course, we do have so many different devices that we can actually use in combination with the Beamer and play these old school games. So what do I actually mean with that? So let's say having a cheap Beamer, costs like 15, let's say $50, whatever. If it has an HDMI input, we can just use a basic, like say, plug and play solution and play these games fairly easy. So you don't actually need this, like say, piece of equipment we're going to be using now. Another test I wanted to do with the arcade port is with some Neo Geo Art of Fighting 3. Where I love this game, it's also a great test for checking out if the emulator is working great or at least the power is enough. So far, no problem. So when it comes to playing some old school games, I love these like see, PC Engine emulators. PC Engine is such a cool device. And also this will run just fine. And I just crashed. Oh yeah. <clears throat> oh, I'm back. But so far the games I've been testing, everything seems to be working just fine. A lot of stuff from MAME, of course, if there's a problem, it's just a configuration problem, but not something to do with the emulator or the hardware itself. So that let me think that when it comes to like playing these retro games, I think they're not implementing any LSA PlayStation 1 because this system is running in basic Android version. And that is most of the time the case. But it's kind of a cool extra, they can play thousands of retro games this way. And the overall quality of the, let's say the screen is quite good. But take note, it's very important what kind of projector screen you're using. Because this is a special one I'm going to be using for, let's say, higher end stuff. But if you're getting like a cheaper one, a very thin cloth, the overall result will be slightly different. So the projector comes with built-in games, but what we can also do is just connect ourselves in separate consoles. So let's go with the Nintendo Switch and some Street Fighter and just have some fun and see how the overall picture quality in gaming is. And of course we can also play some Nintendo Switch through the original Switch, plugging it in into the HDMI port. However, so at first glance I am not really satisfied with the overall result now with the lighting on. And it's the same configuration I did before, doesn't matter, let's shut it off and let's play a short game. So that's what we're getting with these cheaper beamers, it's just unfortunate and we not can't expect any better. The overall quality picture is quite good and I must say that I can really enjoy it, but you need to have a really dark room with this beamer. And at this moment I'm playing with the Joy-Cons. <laughs> Oh man, normally I'm always grabbing an arcade stick or a normal controller. I'm getting the hang of it. I'm still doing some weird stuff, but, but absolutely awesome, good speaker. I'm very satisfied with the overall controller quality and it plays very well. However, with the Beamer, did notice some problems with it. What I already mentioned before, there is some, let's say, dust inside of the lens itself, giving me problems, and it will suffer from overall quality issue. Then, of course, the plug and play solution with the controller is absolutely great. The Beamer itself is not like spectacular, but the combination with RetroArch, you can actually do it yourself if you want to. So is this very special? Not really, but it is a fun overall gimmick with built-in games, and you can even watch a video of plug-in and different system. Thank you all for watching, consider subscribing, and it would be great to see you in the next video.